I told Brother Wade when he was planning uh, the men's breakfast, he wanted to switch it to a men's barbecue. And uh, he said, well, okay, you know, we want to do it outside. We're going to preach. And I said, no, we, we can have fellowship. Nobody actually has to preach. Maybe somebody might want to just give a testimony. Amen. 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 Right. And so we, we broke bread, and, and it was a spread. Like normally at a men's breakfast, you might get a hot dog or a hamburger. We had ribs. We had chicken. I'm like, yo. So Chef Wade, Antoine, um, he had a spread out there for us. And then, and then we got our new brother, Ray. I don't know if y'all know, know Ray over here. Son. He made cheesecakes. He's famous for that. So he brought us some dessert. Had something with a hamburger and a hot dog, but then we had dessert. I was like, yo, what kind of men's breakfast is that? The Sam next to my head, and you know, what happened? I didn't mean to say Sam. Somebody let somebody in. <laughs> what we do it? Um, so yeah, so it was it was co-ed at one point, but um. <laughs> But it was a good men's breakfast. And, and, and without being forced, without being forced, it was this, this moment where the men just got up and shared their testimony. And then it was like, Pastor I'm like, who's next? And you know, you normally got forced, I don't know, uh, you know, brothers to talk. But the men just got up. I mean, some brothers you don't have to force to talk, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not, oh, am I pointing? I'm, I'm sorry, I guess, man. I'm, Hey, on this side of the room, some of us, you don't have, you don't have before us. They, they just always got a, a word for you. But others, like like Brother Rich Wall, you know, you got to really, but he just went right up, man. And it was just an amazing time. It was, and, and I don't want to just go past without mentioning Women always come up here and brag on their events. Yeah. 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 But the men... We can brag on yesterday. Amen. Amen. We can brag on yesterday. Yesterday was, was a great day. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for this morning. We thank you uh, for those who, who give, for those who serve, for those who love you, Lord God. And thank you for loving us, Lord. We do remember uh, those who given their lives and sacrifice to, you know, to defend our country, to defend our freedom uh, at this time, Lord God. And I just ask that you would just bless this word, Lord, not just for us uh, that's sitting in this sanctuary, but those who are joining us online. Uh, Lord, let your word go forth. Lord, we know it won't return void, so do what only you can do. Hide me behind your cross and speak through me, and we'll be sure to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are in chapter 10 of, of the book of Matthew, and um, we're, we're at a tough section of scripture. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's still preparing them to go out, mm -hmm. and he begins to share with them uh, what they will experience as Christ's representatives, yeah. all right? I remember hearing this story told to me before, and I believe, uh, I surely hope it was made up, but I was told this story about these men who ran up in the church with these hoods on, and they ran up in there with these guns in their hand, and they told the folks, um, those who are not, those who are, who are willing to deny Jesus and to denounce their faith, we'll let you live. And so you can leave now, but those who are actually willing to die for the Lord will die today. And they said, all oh, everybody in the church ran out of the church, but those who weren't willing to denounce their faith and who was willing to die for the Lord remained. They said, then the gunmen took off their goods, put their guns away, and said, now we can worship the Lord wow. in spirit and in truth. Yeah. 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 What, 
with you again. Today we get into this passage that challenges our faith in such a way. The Lord lets his disciples know that there will be blood. Matthew 10, verse 16, the Lord is speaking. He says, look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. Beware of them because they will hand you over to local courts, flog you in a synagogue. You will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you are to speak, for you will be given what to say at that hour because it isn't you speaking, but the spirit of your father is speaking through you. It's a tough one. I want you to ask yourself, do you really want to be like Jesus? Hmm? See, after Jesus had instructed his apostles to, to go minister to those who have great needs, he warns them that they will find themselves in great danger. I like Jesus' speech, not because of what he said, but because uh, he, was, he was honest. He was 100 with them and sending out his apostles. He, 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 he kept it real and he told them exactly what to expect. He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't talk in, in a parable. He, he told them exactly what kind of situation they would be walking into. And it's interesting because as the, the great shepherd is his job, to protect the sheep from the wolves, but yet he said, I am sending you out among them. I like the way Jesus says this because sometimes I believe in church, we kind of have a way to make people believe that the moment they say yes to Jesus, like all of their problems disappear. Like, like the moment you accept Christ, everything is going to be great from that point or everything else that, that was ever bothering you is going to go away. And I want you to know that's a lie. That's a, that's a lie lie, you know. That, 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 but it's this idea that, that, that these problems you have, that when I say this prayer, they're going to just go. And, and, and they don't go, but, but what changes when, when, when we say that prayer, when we accept Christ, is, is not the problems, but the reactions we have to the problems, right? It, it's, it's our effort to battle the problems alone as opposed to allowing Christ to battle through us, right? It's, it's, it's that idea of seeing Jesus some, at some point bigger than the problem. So it's not the problem go away, it's our perspective begins to change. Yeah. Don't you know that we are called sheep? And I don't know if we fully understand that implication. Sheep, not only not the brightest um, animal, but they're defenseless. Right? They, they have no defense against danger. All they can do is run, and they can't run that fast. So they have no ability to fight and to get away from the very things that are trying to take their lives. And so they have to be totally reliant on a shepherd, right? They got, they got to stay so close to the shepherd. They got to actually walk the same path that the shepherd has laid out for them because wandering off is a matter of life and death. So, so when, when you're told to stay close to the shepherd, it's not a church thing. Amen. It's for your own protection. Amen. It's for your own ability to walk this thing out in a way that you don't find yourself consistently in danger 
anchor and under attack and failing and falling Amen. to it. Amen. Right? So, so Jesus tells them uh, uh, that yes, when you're going to go on and you're going to remember each other, look for hospitality, who will welcome you and let them provide for your needs. And so you're, you're going and you're looking for hospitality, but you need to expect hostility. Right? You'll discover in this walk with the Lord that you will have some relationships that's absolutely amazing that you would have never had that's just based on the blood of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you'd be like, wow, we I, I don't know, like me and, and Pastor Jane, right? Like, y'all know that's my man Pots and Pants, right? Like, but there's no way that we would have probably ever been friends if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, right? We like night and day in so many different ways. But there is nobody closer to me on this side of the cross than that man right there. And it's only through the blood of Christ that brings. So you will have some amazing relationships that you feel like, you feel like I've known you since the day I was born. And I could have just met you, but the blood of Christ brings us together like nothing else does. Right? But you will also have some people that will straight hate on you because of your relationship with Christ. Right? There's some that you're like, I don't eat. You don't even really know me, but somehow you don't like me. Right? And, and I, I, wait, does anybody got some folks that don't even know you but don't like you? Right? And you're like, what is it? Like, what is your problem? Right? And, 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 and it's because this thing that we that we have in this relationship with the Lord, it either draws people to us or draws people away from us. Right? And, and, and so he says, be shrewd as snakes. That means be be wise, right? And how we go out, be wise in, in our ability to avoid danger. Be smart about how you go out into this world. Don't fear going out and representing Christ, right? But don't foolishly place yourself in danger either, right? When we go out on prayer walks, those of us who show up on Wednesday uh, and go, right? Am I so What? One? Okay. But but when we go out on prayer walks, right, we know that the cats on the corners is hustling. We know that they most likely got guns and uh, on them, right? And, and and we know they probably don't want us out there praying against their activity on their corners, right? But guess what? We go out there anyway. Right? And we go out there and we pray anyway. But that's what we don't do. We don't do us go, go out there and make a circle around them on their corner. We don't take a bullhorn and say, don't buy drugs from these guys, right? Like, like we don't go antagonizing them and putting the Lord to the test. We don't go out and put ourselves in, in immediate harm or immediate danger, but it doesn't mean we don't go out. I got to say, some of us is scared to go out in our own communities and lift up our Lord. I ain't going out there prayer walking. Like it's going to just go away. Who do you think got more heart, us or the cops? You see that delay to go into the school? <laughs> But you see them, them parents who loved them kids who wanted to go into school and didn't have no guns? Yeah. You see the difference? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you, the cops are just as scared as you are out in the street. And they ain't got guns. But guess what? The other guys got bigger guns and no rules. But we got Jesus. We got Jesus. Right? Like when we go out, we don't plan to get in a shootout. We plan to get in a shutout. When we stand in the corner and we pray, we lift it up God to do something about what it is that we're seeing and what it is that we're doing. Yeah. We can't fear going out and lifting up the name 
of the Lord. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, go out there and be innocent as doves. Innocent refers to this purity of intention. We don't compromise the gospel. Don't compromise yourself. Don't go out there and try to uh, uh, antagonize nobody. Don't try to start no conflict. It says, go uh, out there and, and, and have a level of innocence, a level of purity. You're representing Christ yeah. every time you walk out. And, and so there, there's a need to be a balance, right, be, between our shrewdness, right, and our innocence. And so the saying goes, shrewdness without innocence is deceitful, right? But innocence without shrewdness is, is dangerous, right? And so when the two are in balance, it, it, it demonstrates um, both this foresight and this courage in our Lord. And, and so we get to this point, and up until this point, all the disciples, you know, you come to church, and, and all you got to, to worry about is, 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 is somebody going to give you a proper welcome or not? That's all they knew at this point. Are they going to give us a proper welcome? Are they going to share our resources? But as ministry increases, so does opposition. Right? That's why I be saying at every level there's another devil, right? Be because Jesus begins to get into, in, in this next passage, these various levels of, of persecution, which becomes a normal part of a disciple's life. And so it's like the, 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 the more we line ourselves up with the Lord, the more we're going to experience uh, suffering from those who are against him, right? And so we need to, to understand that, that the enemy is not going to just give us a pass. Go, go share the gospel uh, with your family and with your friends and with your co-workers and your neighbors. You go out and hide God bless you. <laughs> you know, he's not going to just give you that, that free reign without trying to come at you, yeah, yeah. without trying to distract you, without trying to discourage you. Like, you don't get a pass to just go share the gospel, right? And so the disciples, they were called to, to remain uh, innocent, to remain pure, but don't be naive. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He said, some of you will face uh, arrest. That's what being handed over means. Some of you will, will be, be brought before the, the Jewish courts, the Sanhedrin. Others will be flogged. Uh, in the synagogues, which is the, the Jewish place of worship capacity, I don't know what to imagine. Imagine being beat down, right? Mm -hmm. In church by the very people you're trying to lift up and lead. Can, can you imagine? I'm just saying, hypothetical. Imagine that, right? Huh? Is it possible? It's, it's quiet up in this place. You know? <laughs> He said, you will face encounters that will bring you before uh, the Gentiles, before the kings, before the governors. And so, so we need to know that following Christ will bring us uh, ops, as my daughter called them, right? I, that's opposition. She's like, oh, I got so many ops out here, you know, on my TikTok. <laughs> Why do you have ops on your TikTok? Like, what does that even mean? I need an interpreter to talk to my 16 year old. But, um, <laughs> but following Christ will, will bring you the, these ops from the church and from the world, right? But, but Jesus views these, these encounters with these uh, ops uh, as opportunities to witness the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Paul says it in Philippians 1, 12 to 14. He's like, yo, I want you to know, brothers, he said that, 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 that what has happened to me, he's talking about being arrested, has actually served to advance the gospel. He says, as a result, right, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my Chains. Most other brothers and sisters in here have become confident in the Lord and, and dare they more proclaim his word, you know, without fear. And, and so he's saying essentially that when I'm in prison, I start a prison ministry, right? When I go to hospital, I 
witness to the nurses and the doctors and the other patients that's, that's there beside me, right? And so when I'm in the valleys yeah. of life, yeah, yeah. I'm not meant to be void yeah. of the word and the voice of God. It's shade yeah. though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me, thy hand and thy rod, thy staff, they will comfort me, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but most of us don't want confrontation. Mm -hmm. right. we, we don't want to be questioned about our faith. We don't want to debate our faith. Most of us feel we don't know enough to defend our faith. And so we just rather not talk about it, right? So we just leave spaces void of our testimony because we worried about do we have enough to say? Do we know enough? Is somebody going to embarrass us? Is somebody going to make us question the very things that we believe? So we choose just not to say that. Just pass me a burger. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to talk about religion. We ain't going to talk about politics, right? Mm -hmm. no, we're called to do this very thing. And Jesus, is, he's ensuring them that, that, look here, the Holy Spirit will give you, will give us the right words to say at just the right time. It ain't got to be you speaking because it's God that's going to speak through you. He's trying to encourage them that it's going to come back to you at just the right time, right? G. G. Johns explains it like this. He says, when the advocate, the Holy Spirit comes, in John 14 and 26, Jesus says, whom the Father will send in my name, he will remind you of all things, yeah. right, that I've said to you. He'll teach you and remind you of all things I will say to you. So just at the right time, right, if we're putting this stuff in us, right, he said the Spirit will enable you, right, in these matters of the faith at just the right time. It affirms that out of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? And so if we are hiding this word in our hearts at the right time, right, it will come back up at the appropriate time. It will have, I can't tell you how many times, how many times somebody has either asked a question or started a debate, right? And the Lord has just brought scriptures up. It just, it just brings like bling. I'm like, wow. You know, not, not that I have memorized the Bible. I don't know all the exact even addresses of the things that I know about the word. But let me tell you what a couple of decades of reading the word every day does to you. You get into a conversation, you're like, oh, I, give me, I'll tell you exactly where it's at, but let me tell you what it's saying. I, I want you to know it's so, so it's, it's nice to know where it's at. It's nice to be able to dial up a verse, but it's better to know what the verse actually says. What the verse actually means. Strive for knowing the word of God. Amen. Right? Because when you got this word in you, I can't tell you yeah. how many opportunities you'll realize you have to give it back to somebody. Yeah. Right? You ain't got to worry about what to say. The Lord will tell you what to say when that time is. But don't be scared to open your mouth. We need that, that word in us. Because hostility is going to come. Attacks is going to come. He says the battle is heating up. And then in this next section, Jesus speaks of three types of opposition we're going to endure. He talks about betrayal. He talks about hate, and he talks about persecution. Look at verse 21. He said, brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children rise up against parents and have them put to death. This is Bible, and this is Jesus speaking. He said, the intensity of opposition will increase. Families will be divided. Because of me, ties that you thought you had will be broken because of me. When we change our lives yeah. and we start lining up with Christ, yeah, yeah. there's some people who get out of line. Yeah. There's some people who start walking away from you. The closer you walk with Jesus, 
you'll start to see the further some people walk next to you. Jesus knows betrayal is coming to him, right? From, from one of his 12, we know that's on the way, right? And, 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 and when Judas does actually betray Jesus, the others don't even know. They didn't even know the soul was different. They're just like, no, not I, no, not I, no, not I. They don't even know because he fit in so well. You know the enemy can fit in well with you, right? Let, let me tell you, you know, you can have uh, enemies and, and uh, what they call them, frenemies, right? That's your friends that hate on you. I'm trying to give you all this link while learning it, right? But it's these enemies and, and then you got your frenemies and, and they all blend in together, right? And so it's this betrayal that's coming. Have you ever been betrayed in Christ? You know, they say you really not like Jesus until you've been betrayed by Judas. Have you ever been betrayed? Are you still mad at the person? <laughs> see, see, here's the thing. If you still got bitterness and anger in your heart because of that betrayal, right? That's shackling you, not them. First of all. And second of all, if you have been betrayed because of Christ, then that means you're like Christ. Then, then I ask you, did you want to be like Christ? So, so when you got betrayed, you should have said, praise God, I'm just like Jesus. Huh? I've been betrayed in Christ. Huh? Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Huh? Ain't nobody celebrating their betrayal. Come on. You, we just said we want to be like Jesus. Amen. He said, we're going to be betrayed. Then verse 22, he said, you will be hated by everyone because of my name. He says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. You know, see, when you let people know, right, that, that hell and eternal damnation, like, awaits them as sinners who don't accept Christ, I, I think they start to hate you. When you say that, right? Sinners don't really appreciate that when you tell them they're going to hell. Uh, and eternal damnation. They, they, yeah, they don't like, okay, what you want to drink after that? Like, nah, right? When, when you tell folks that the only way to the Father is through the Son, right? Then, then you have some other folks that you, your Jehovah Witness is going to hate you. The Muslims are going, you telling them that, yo, all this stuff that I've been believing and doing all my life. It's going to lead me to hell as well. So, so now you got your sinners hating you. Now you got all other religions and cults hating you, right? Because you're walking with this Jesus. So, so when you start to face that betrayal and when you start to feel that hate, right? As Christians, we can start to think about, you know what? Maybe this cross is too much to bear. Maybe I need to step away from this Christ thing. I thought it was going to bring me friends, but it's bringing me more enemies mm. by me walking with the Lord, right? Lord. You know, betrayal and, and hate. Nobody actually wants that, right? Nobody wants to do something that's going to marginalize them, right? And, and, and so, you know, being the only saved person in your family, <laughs> huh? You know what that's like? The ridicule, the jokes, you know, that you get by being the only one saved in the family, the only one saved at work, the only one saved in your crew, huh? You know, folks, they, they got all kinds of jokes and things they want to play and say about you because you said yes to Jesus. Being the one who's trying to live a life that's honoring unto the Lord while everyone else is supposedly living their Best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. Huh? That's a difficult place to be, ain't it? Right? You know, but Jesus is calling for us as his followers to have endurance. He's calling us to stand firm in the faith. This is a call to, to finish the race so that we can hear, well done, thy 
faithful servant. It's, it's this enduring that he's called, but not just an enduring in our personal life, but an endurance for Christians throughout the end of time. James says in one and two voices, consider it pure or great joy, my brothers, whenever you face or experience various kinds of trials and testing of your faith because it produces endurance or perseverance and endurance must complete its work so that you might be mature and complete lacking nothing. It's something about coming through a struggle with God. Right? It's something about Him grabbing you and pulling you through when you couldn't pull yourself through. It's something about going through it and being on the other side of it. And you're like, look at God. Look at what I am. It's something about having this testimony. My brother been saying, I don't look like what I've been through. We see the smiles and we see the, the mass when we look at each other, but we don't know so many times the stories of what God has done. And the truth is, we won't know if y'all don't open your mouth and give y'all testimony what God has done. He says we will be betrayed. He says we will be hated. And verse 23 says when they persecute you. Underline when in your Bible. It's okay to write in your Bible. You look at mine, it's all written in, all right? He says, when they persecute you in one town, flee to another. For truly I tell you, you would not have gone through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes, right? He says, you know, we'll be hated, we'll be betrayed, and we will be Persecuted. He says, when they persecute you, not if. Not if they persecute you. He says, when. Confirming that persecution will come. Right? Paul says in, 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 in 2 Timothy 3 and 12, everyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. Right? And, and so it's revving up from betrayal to, to hate to persecution. I want you to know it takes courage to be a Christian. Amen? Amen. It takes courage to be a Christian. It takes endurance to be a Christian. But the funny thing is, in spite of the word saying it, in spite of Jesus foretelling it, sometimes when we find ourselves in these positions, we actually find ourselves in shock. And I can't believe this is happening to me. Why is this happening to me? I thought I was doing everything right. I was in church on Sunday. I gave almost a tithe. God bless you. I, mean, I, I, I went to Bible study while I signed on. All right, like, uh, I done did devotion three out of five. Why is this happening to me? Jesus said clearly, when they persecute you, right? And, and, and Jesus, he calls us to bravery, but not foolishness, right? He said, if you have the ability to avoid the drama, do it. If you can avoid the drama and continue to proclaim my name, go ahead and, and do it, right? And then he says, I'll return, mm -hmm. right, before y'all have fully evangelized the Jews. And, and so this is not false promise. And he said, I'm going to have my second coming by you on your mission trip, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's time to go to the cross, hadn't arrived yet. The Holy Spirit hasn't been swept, sent to and dwell them yet. Uh, it's one of those things that we always talked about in the seminary, the already and the, and the not yet, right? And so he, he's saying that some of this yeah, yeah. Will, will be fulfilled in, in, in your time. Some of this has not happened yet. It will be fulfilled in the course of time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this persecution will come. And the question is, do we really want to be like Jesus? 
Because he's finished this thing up in verse 24. He says, a disciple is not above his teacher or a slave above his master. It is enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If they call the head of the house Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So Jesus is letting his apostles know, right? He wasn't asking them nothing to do nothing, right? That he hadn't already done or would be going through, right? He was betrayed not just by, by Judas, but by his people. He was betrayed by the Jewish nation. He was hated not just by, by the unbelievers, but by the religious leaders themselves. And he was persecuted not just by the Jewish council, but crucified by the Roman government. It says that the disciples not above his teacher, meaning that if they did this to the perfect God-man, what are they going to do to the other imperfect people who we are? Do you want to be like Jesus? When Jesus cast out the demons, they said he was daughtered by the demons. He the head of demons, right? They said if they accused them the head of the house of demonic power, then what they want to accuse us of, those who are members of this household, right? And so we are being sent out, and we need to understand every time we leave, and sometimes when we're in Christian circles, we can be sheep among wolves. But we need to be reminded that our Lord was led like a lamb to the slaughter. You get mad when you're being talked about behind your back. But he was spit on in his face. You might be wrongly accused of doing something. But he was crucified for doing nothing wrong. Right? And the more we become like Christ, the harder it will be to coexist in this sinful world. And so the truth is, if you want a sweet life, come to church every other week. <laughs> Don't really give or sacrifice anything. Don't sign up for a ministry. And keep your mouth shut about Jesus when you're around other people. You will fit in well. The saying goes, if you're not bumping into Satan, you must be walking in step with him. It's a difficult and challenging life to walk like Christ. But there is a reward for those who endure. There's a reward awaiting called eternal life for enduring to the end. If you get to the end of the book, you see that we win. I got a mansion that's being built for me. That wasn't made with human hands for enduring to the end. My Bible tells me no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So the question is, do we want to be like Jesus? If we do, then we must know what's going to be accompanied with some endurance so that we can end it like Jesus. Because there will be blood. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Anderson, for that challenging word. For some, I'm sure this was an encouragement because he pointed out to us exactly what it means to follow Christ. Sometimes we're not really sure what it means to follow in his footsteps, but he made it clear today there will be blood. For the person who may be here and you recognize that you have been struggling with a lot of life's challenges. Pastor Anderson said it. If you're not bumping into Satan, you're walking with him. And for that person who may be here with his 
in this sanctuary or for that person who might be watching online. The question is posed to you. Are you walking with him or walking against him? With every head bowed, every eye closed, we want to offer an opportunity to that person who no longer wants to walk with Satan. You now want to give your life to Jesus. It's not going to be over with in terms of the struggles that you go through every single day, but your response to those things will now be different. You have an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. And if you recognize that Jesus died for you, was buried, and was resurrected on the third day, just by believing that the Bible says that you are saved, if you are recognizing that you are in need of a Savior, if you're here in the sanctuary, won't you raise your hand? will have someone be in touch with you to talk with you about what it means to be saved, to be a disciple, to be a believer. Because there will be blood. Won't you raise your hand if you recognize that you know you need the Lord, the struggles that you go through every single day, is because you're not walking with him. If you're online watching the stream, if you could just pray with me because you recognize you need the Lord, just repeat after me. I am a sinner and deserve the punishment for my sin. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. I ask for God's forgiveness. I will follow Jesus and I confess him as my Lord and Savior. I receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ today. If you have prayed that prayer, please text us at 267-991-8907. Again, if you prayed that prayer, please text us at 267-991-8907. Someone will be in touch with you. If you are a believer and you recognize that the struggles that you have been going through have been necessary, you need to draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Won't you raise your hand? We can pray for you right now for I see that hand. For, I see those hands. I see that hand. I see that hand in the back. For those of us who recognize that we're, got, we're going to constantly struggle, we need to do things in his strength and in his power. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today, which has so clearly told us that there will be opposition in living for you. We thank you, Lord, for how you are continuing to shift us and put us in position, Lord, that we might do your will. We thank you, Lord, for how you continue to keep us, sometimes in spite of ourselves. God, we ask that you would just give us the strength, give us the wisdom, give us the courage that it takes to live for you, Lord. Help us, Lord, as we continue to struggle we recognize that it's only if we truly and completely trust in you that you will bring us through it. God, we thank you, even in advance, for the answer, for bringing us through each and every trial. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And for anyone who may be here who might be looking for a church home, if you recognize that God may be calling you to worship here with us at Great Commission Church, you can see me after service. If you are watching online, please text the word CONNECT to 267-991-8907. And again, someone will reach out to you about the process of becoming a member of Great Commission Church. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God for his word. 
That's an incredible word this morning. Praise God for using Pastor Anderson uh, to just uh, really challenge and encourage and convict uh, being used by the Lord. Uh, we get a chance as a church family, whether we are here physically or joining online virtually, to participate in the Lord's table. And uh, if you're joining us online, if you could just gather uh, perhaps juice and, and bread and, and just prepare your hearts and your minds. If you are here in the sanctuary and you did not receive a uh, communion, um, juice and cracker, please raise your hand. Someone will provide that to you right away. I see a couple hands over here. If you did not receive elements, please raise your hand and we'll provide that for you. This is something that we do together as we recognize the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. We want to get our hearts and our minds right. This is a time where we just ask that you would just fully and completely focus on Jesus. And if you know him, we invite you to participate uh, in this Lord's Supper. I want to read uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. He gives some parameters and some instructions uh, for what we're about to do. He says this to the church at Corinth, a group of believers much like us who are coming to the Lord's table. He says, for I received from the Lord what also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats and drinks, eats the bread or drinks a cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. And so we want to give you an opportunity as we gather around. As Paul says, we do this to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But before we do that, we want to do some heart examination. We want to take an inventory of our heart and our minds. And so we want to give you an opportunity to do that in prayer. So for a few moments, as our brother plays the piano, just uh, ask the Lord to reveal anything that's, that's not like him to you. And we have this opportunity as believers to confess our sins. And he, the scripture says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do some examination, to do some judgment, to judge your heart and your mind and confess your sins before the Lord. Get things right before we partake of the Lord's table. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being able to approach your throne of grace, Lord, with boldness, Lord. And we can only do that because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on our behalf, Father God. We can only do that because of your grace. And so, God, we come to you asking, Lord, that you would forgive us any sin that we have committed, those things that we have done, that we have harbored, those things that we have practiced, those things we have done, perhaps this morning or this week, that we have yet to confess, Lord God. We come to you humbly asking that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us, that you would renew our fellowship with you. Lord, we ask that you bless these elements as we partake that they would truly be a part of this opportunity to worship you 
and to remember and to celebrate the death of Jesus until he comes. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's eat together. Let's drink together. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, God, we thank you once again. We thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that we have with you. And Lord God, we thank you for the fellowship we have with one another, God. And you have graced us with the opportunity to come with others that are part of this fellowship, Father, and partake in the Lord's table to remember the body and the blood that you loved us so much that you sent your son from heaven to earth to pay the ultimate price for our sins. We deserve to die. That's what the scripture says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are so grateful. We're so thankful. We love you, Lord. Amen.